smoke some and I passed out.
What's up, guys? Let's take a second to do a sound check. Get comfortable. Grab a snack. Grab something to drink. And uh, we'll get started in a minute. Let me know how my mic is. And we'll be good to go. Sound is great. Good to know. This microphone is uh, top notch. So I think I'm done with gear. No need for any new gear. I think I'm maxed out with gear. I am trying a new... Uh, I'll be trying a new um, webcam soon. So a uh, webcam company, webcam company uh, reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to demo their new webcam that uses some kind of AI to improve the image. So uh, you guys will be seeing that soon. I am off camera today. Today is a pajama day and uh, I have the uh, camera behind the monitor. So, all right, well, uh, Give it a moment or two. We'll let everyone settle in. Hope you guys are doing well. It is Thursday, September 8th. We have CPI coming up next Tuesday. Got the weekend ahead of us. Labor Day is behind us. And it's back to business. So for this stream, so before we get into... Uh, so I actually did leave my house today. So I was talking yesterday about trading and um, the last couple of years, or more than a couple. I use the word, a lot of people use the word couple incorrectly. They say a couple when a couple means technically two. Uh, the last few years, I've spent a fair amount of time in <laughs> casual clothing. Uh, I do get dressed, obviously. I mean, I'm, I'm partially, I'm, I'm, I'm joking. But um, I did leave the house today. Went to the gym. Uh, went to the range and uh, yeah now I'm back in pajamas in our household like we we look forward to winding down and getting in comfortable clothing as soon as possible my wife and I'll look at each other around like 5 6 p.m. and be like pajama time all right no more responsibilities no not leaving the house anymore and uh, yeah um, all right so let's get started thank you for tuning in if you haven't already subscribed to the new channel, please subscribe to the new channel. Hit the like button. Do all that good stuff. Uh, no, I am not leaving Block Roots, or you know, I, I will. I am not going to not post on Block Roots channel anymore. I've been talking about starting a new channel for a while now. I'm going to try to build up the following, gain some traction before I get into doing more of like the the vlogging type of things, but. No, I, I will still be posting on, um, not posting, but yeah, posting, doing live streams on Block Roots and this channel. So Block Roots is not going anywhere. Uh, I started this channel. I wanted to start this channel a lot earlier. Um, as all of you know, you know, if I say I'm going to do something, it probably means I get add a month or two months on top of uh, that that deadline. I don't really have any hard deadlines, right? I, I don't have anyone that I really answer to. Um, I'm all just doing things uh, on my own time. But uh, Josh and I have been working on something in the background for a while now. Uh, we wanted to release that over the summer, but it's taken a little bit of time. And um, yeah, in the time being, I figured I would grow a channel and uh, try to do something a little bit different. Anyway, um, so please subscribe. I appreciate that. The algo would appreciate that. Starting from scratch is something that is uh, fun, but it is obviously difficult. Obviously, none of what I say in this video in the stream is financial advice, right? Saying that doesn't mean anything, though, right? You could say that, and, and it's not like uh, if you're doing anything egregious or, or you know, that is unscrupulous or uh, illegal, that's not going to cover your ass. But I, I want you guys to know, like, I'm not telling you things. Rather, I, I, I don't want to tell you anything and have you immediately go act on it. I want you to be able to come to your own conclusions, um, hunt for your own food, right, and and trade on your own, right? Um, 
because one, I'm not right all the time. Uh, I'm, I'm right lately. My hit rate is 64%. Um, and that means that 64% of the time that I'm correct, but better way to put that is 36% of the time I'm incorrect, right? And that's a significant amount of, um, of the trades I take. So definitely not a crystal ball. You know, there's times when I have a higher hit rate. There's times when I have a lower hit rate, but just the idea is like, you can't follow someone else. I obviously hope that you take something from these streams, but anyway. Um, okay. So I have a little bit of an agenda. Uh, I have a tendency to do streams and riff. I like riffing. It, I, I enjoy it. I, I know that it's better to have structure because I, I aim to cover a lot of things in a stream, right? And when you're doing it in the moment, you think, okay, I'm going to cover X, Y, Z amount of points. Um, and it's easy to like get to the end of the stream and I'll finish and I'll realize, holy shit, <laughs> the thing that I tweeted, I never even got to, All right? So one of the things I think that I um, mentioned last stream was a book list. So I will make sure that I post a book list again after the stream. I wanted to do it during the stream. And I said something along the lines of, you know, you guys can screenshot this. I'm just going to post it on Twitter again. And you can go ahead and, and see it. It'll be right after uh, right after I finish the stream. But if I don't have bullet points, and I'm not fine following some kind of like, you know, rubric. Um, it's easy to forget things. And I don't want to forget things. I, I want to make these streams dense. I don't want to make them very long, but I want them to be dense. I want them to cover all the points uh, in a clear and cogent manner. And, and I guess more importantly, I want to make sure I cover all the points I set out to cover without forgetting. And trust me, I forget a lot of things lately. Anyway, the first thing that I want to go over before we go into the charts, and this is something that, you know, I've been talking about this now for a couple months, talking about, eh, I'm not really going to be serious again until after Labor Day. Well, Labor Day has come and gone. Over the summer, markets are different places, right? Seriously, a significant amount of Wall Street and the movers and shakers within markets step away, as most people should, especially if the summer coincides with a a pretty violent uh, bear market, right? An unforgiving, I shouldn't say violent, I should say unforgiving, an unforgiving bear market. If you're not really proficient at this game, that's a good time to step away, right? I mean, it's the summer for most people, right? Um, enjoy it, get some relaxation, get some rest. It doesn't mean stop learning, but it's it's not the most conducive environment to learn in. Bear markets are tough, no matter what, but um, it, markets are thinner as a whole over the summer. There is some seasonality at play, and, and honestly, desks are not exactly populated. TradFi desks are not exactly popul populated. You do have a significant amount of traders and, and movers and shakers, as I the term that I used, uh, literally going out to the Hamptons and summering in the Hamptons and <laughs> doing what you would do if you made you know, an exorbitant amount of money um, and spent most of your time working, right? Looking forward to that two months of not doing shit. So that's done. It's back to business. And you could think of this as the beginning of our athletic season. So we're back full steam, right? Taking this very seriously and very seriously for me, I, I for some reason, I talk about phase changing activities in my life. Um, I create them, right? I, I, since I was a kid, I used to look towards, like, it's just going to sound silly. I tell myself that the moment that I had my espresso or my black coffee before I went to the gym or sometimes pre-workout, that that was going to be the moment that once I finished that glass where things changed, right? Physiologically, mentally, things are going to change. From that moment on, I'm committed towards going to the gym and absolutely busting my ass for that period of time and everything else would, would kind of gray out. So that's a phase changing activity that you can isolate to one particular activity. For me also, the fall transition from summer to fall is a massive phase change period. And I think it's obviously it's ingrained in, in a lot of people, um, especially if you're in the United States and you follow that sort of school system schedule where, you know, you finish summer, go back to school at the beginning of September, um, you know, leisure is done, it's back to business. 
Uh, there's a lot of industries that this is similar in as well. But for me, this is, this is something I take very seriously. So I am reapproaching this. Um, I think the way that every, everyone should, which is I started a new account, right? It's not like I zeroed out an account, but I, I topped off a new account. I started a new journal and I'm treating this like a business, which is how you have to treat trading. You have to treat trading like a business. Most people come into trading and if they're new, you know, they've, maybe they've hit a few, you know, they've had a few successful trades. Maybe they've had a successful run of time, short period of time. And they just think you could just from that, like just riff with trading, right? Riff with trading and wing it. And you know, I just, I got this figured out. I got this feel. And if you saw me right now on the camera, which I don't have on, I'd be like kind of jiving my shoulders, sort of like a boxer would, you know, I, I you know, I have, I have a feel for this. You don't, <laughs> you don't, you're on a, you know, you're on a hot streak. Um, so a business, you would never try to run a business without keeping records, right? You'd never start like, I think of any company, like a coffee company, whatever. Think, I'm thinking of coffee because I'm drinking coffee. You'd never start uh, a store without keeping records, like thinking that you're just going to end up up at the end of the month and then at the end of the year and be able to cover your bills and be able to pay your employees and, and, and get out of the red. Most businesses start in the red. Don't start your trading in the red. Um, and by, by red, I mean, don't start trading by taking on debt, but you have to treat your trading like a business. You have to know exactly how you're performing based on hard data, because this is the data you're going to be leaning on, right? Over time, you have to give things a good enough sample, obviously to judge over time. You're going to, you're going to make a lot of your decisions. Uh, ideally, you're going to change some decisions and, and make some important decisions based on this data that you accumulate. Okay, so this is a setup that I tend to do really well on. Okay, so this is a day of the week that I tend to do really poorly on. Um, this is the time of day that I trade really well. This is a time of day when I trade really poorly. This is a setup that I trade really well. This is a setup that I trade really poorly. You know, you the more data you have, I don't want to say the more data because there's some things that obviously are just going to be noise, but the better off you'll be. So get in the habit of journaling your trading. I created a new Discord, which I, it was right in front of my face the entire time. I can't believe I never did it. I created a Discord channel just for myself to record this information, okay? Uh, how I felt for the day, the trades I took for the day. I screenshot a bunch of shit, but I started a new Edgewonk account. Now, I've been using, my buddy Cosmonaut started a new API-based trading journal. I've been using CoinMarketMan as well. I like to try out new stuff, right? I'm a gear dude. I like trying out new gear. I like trying out new software. You guys know me by trying out everything and giving you my feel, my opinion on it. So the API stuff is great, right? The stuff, it depends on what exchange you trade on though, right? Like some exchanges won't connect, okay? Now you have access to notepad and pen and paper, right? You could do this by hand. It's a pain in the ass, but people did it forever. You have access to an Excel, use Excel. You have access to a Discord. You could do what I said with Discord. But the API-based things are, obviously, they're more sophisticated. It's great for that stuff to get pulled automatically. You have nice visualizations of your performance. You know, some of them are a little bit more sophisticated than others. I show you, again, time of day stats, setup stats. Hands down, and I do not get anything for saying this, I used Edgewonk when I was trading legacy markets. I got out of using Edgewonk because you have to manually input everything. And I thought, oh, that's a pain in the ass. I have these better options now. No. There's no reason why, and I've, I've gone back to Edgewonk because you cannot compare any trading journaling software to Edgewonk. If you're trading legacy, you could pull the information right off the brokerage accounts. If you're trading crypto, you have to manually put this shit in. Now, that might seem like a pain in the ass, okay? But if this is something where you are trying to gain wealth from doing it, and you're trying to be the best of the best, and you're trying to be good at something that is, is extremely difficult, you absolutely can make the time to put in that work too, the boring, monotonous work of actually recording the data, putting in your trades at the end of the day, and 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 reconciling all this information. It's the accounting you need to do for a business. So someone said, ah, oh, you got to manually put in your trades. Well, if I take 20 trades a day, then I just got to fucking put in 20 trades into Edgewonk. And it's, it is, it is the work that I have to do to make sure that I maintain some level of greatness, right? And I'm not saying, you know, you know, fucking amazing trader. There's times when I'm trading, you know, incredibly, there's times that I'm trading poorly. By journaling, I know when those times are, right? And maybe I could make some adjustments. 
um, but you absolutely have the time to do that. Like, you're not going to become great without putting in the work that is kind of, you know, menial. Trivi it might seem trivial. So I want to get that out of the way. Check out Edgewonk. Um, yes, you have to put in the in information yourself. You know what? It, that being said, because you have to put it in yourself, like, it's on you to maintain integrity, right? But if you if you don't put in the accurate trades, you're like, if you're fucking lying to yourself, like, you have bigger issues. <laughs> but um, anyway, all right. So let's take a look at the markets. So just looking across the board, NASDAQ, US dollar, Ethereum, crude oil, S&P, Bitcoin, and then our two and our tens. Um, this is a five-day adjustment now. So you have a one to five. Obviously, we just started a new trading day, so I'm not going to look at the one because it's not going to be anything at the margin. But BTC underperforming the S&P the last few days. BTC underperforming ETH. We're going into the merge. We have CPI coming up. All right. Today, Powell spoke. Okay. He mentioned, so uh, there's a great stat that, so one, September's generally have been red months. Historically, September's are red. Doesn't mean that, you know, we, we could say with a high level of certainty that this September is going to be red. This is truly a very different time in markets than any other period. So you have to be really careful by focusing too much on what's occurred in the past. That's the same. I mean, that, that can be, that, that should be understood no matter what, right? We're trading, looking through the windshield, not looking through the rear view mirror. So it's, it's easy to assume that you could just continue to extrapolate what's happened in the past and the future, but that's not the way things work. So September, though, historically red. Midterms, historically a good period to be long. After September, starting in October to the end of the year, positive returns. More specifically, in midterm years, it's been the case that there has been some very significant moves to the downside in the September leading up. And it's kind of like what I'm saying is... What we've had occur kind of looks very much like what's occurred in the past during the same time period. Now, in the past, we didn't have this high level of inflation. We didn't have markets looking anything like they do right now. Geopolitical shit happening out the wazoo. Um, I think you get the point, right? It's not exactly we're, we're not in the same environment, context, conditions, etc. But that being said, there's a lot of negative news that's being thrown at the market and the S&P hasn't made new lows. It's holding a significant, significant structural level. Powell spoke today, mentioned, you know, no service to polit political agendas, right? I don't know if you could trust what he's saying though. So at the end of the day, Powell's going to say one thing. Powell has said a bunch of things this year that haven't necessarily turned out to be true. So they're saying this, they're doing some lip service to this because, again, people are thinking, oh, you know, uh, markets should move up based on midterms. The Fed explicitly said that they don't want, you know, Kaskari said that he doesn't want or he didn't really like the markets moving up uh, when they're trying to basically have the opposite effect on markets. Now, again, what they say, what they do, what they really want, all different things. Um, so we have CPI coming up this this Tuesday. My CPI playbook is, is going to be the same as it has been for the entire year. Well, since they've mattered. So we'll go back to like February, March, when they really started kicking in high gear. So my first trade following the S&P, the market is still efficient. If the market hasn't gotten away from me for more than like 50 basis points, a half a percent, and we're moving up or we're moving down, I'm just dumping in the direction of that. So, um, you know, if the S&P breaks down right out the gate, you know, if the print is in line and the S&P breaks down, if the print is slightly out of line, the first trade, regardless of how long it, it, it occurs, I'm going in the direction of that. I'm going to be capping out at a predetermined level. So if it's not, you know, again, if it's not more than a half a percent away from me in that split second that I could get the trade on, then I'm uh, I'm all for the trade. A lot of the times you're going to see that one, the first move is going to be a false move. So you'll get sort of a break upward. I went over this in the last stream, get a break upward or a break downward. You know, CPIs, FOMCs, you get something that might last like, uh, you know, a half hour to an hour, but then the market might completely reverse. A lot of times that's what happens regardless of the direction. So I think, though, what we can anticipate is that inflation is softening. Things are coming down. I'm kind of expecting more of this to continue. Um, but I'm trading this in isolation. I'm not uh, I'm not reading too much into the actual print. I'm just looking for these two trades. I'm just looking for the first directional trade outside, out of the gate, right? Right from the release. S&P starts moving up, I'm long. S&P starts moving down, I'm short. All right, I'm closing that out probably around 2%. A lot of times you get at least two, two and a half, somewhere it's three. 
um you know as many times where it runs if you get lucky you get lucky but i, I want to be out i want to be out at two percent if i could get in in that split second after you know i capture 150 basis points you know one and a half percent two percent i'm good the second trade's more nuanced it's more timing based it's looking for some kind of breakdown or reversal so same thing that i've been doing this entire year so there shouldn't be like news to anybody's ears um looking at btc right now just high time frame stuff and then we'll get down to the uh the lower time frame and and i almost got on without saying or forgot about saying it's been 20 minutes already though um for all my friends across the pond i am very sorry for your queen <clears throat> new time for really anybody right uh i guess the, the king now resumes the position and you know when was the last time that was that was uh, it's not on the top of my head so uh but anyhow my condolences to you across the pond you know the united kingdom england everybody over there so anyway um high time frame wise btc much weaker than eth right so this is the daily for eth we're looking i'll expand the dailies real quick daily for eth daily for btc btc is at the lows i think btc is actually below prior all-time high so if i put this on real quick we are sort of at ah, we're back above prior all-time high I don't know if this level is that significant right now unless we get some massive puncture of the level but kind of dancing around it right now i mentioned yesterday i was anticipating um a little bit lower of a probe i said something along the lines if you're buying this dip make sure you're prepared to buy another one thinking that we'd get something that maybe floated a little bit higher up and then came back down for another tap nothing extreme right so i wasn't saying that thinking we're going my opinion is still that the market is in the process of bottoming i wasn't talking about another dip you know taking us down to 12 or 14 or anything like that this is a reasonable area to expect the, the market to to double tap again and to find support off of right high time frame support you know it's it's an ugly move to come all the way back here if you look at the weekly if you look at the daily you know all all trends are down um but it is one of those significant contextual levels where you could you know see a ton of activity get brought into the market and that's really what I look for, right? Uh, on the high time frames, on the low time frames, you know, where does the market have to go to get the most people involved? Um, where can we see the most, you know, the, the most significant amount of positions exchange hands? And we saw a very significant exchange yesterday. We saw a significant exchange uh, on ETH in terms of short covering on OKX. Um, and I don't know if, you know, I, I, I changed my positioning because of this reversal that we had. I don't know if we necessarily are going to see a move that comes and takes out these lows at, at any time in the short term right we could very well be seeing the market base out in this region before another move up and that's kind of what i'm expecting i don't think we're going to get like a a rollover right now because i don't think that the s p is 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 going to do that either i think the s p has you know had a significant pullback off of this high you know we're kind of guarding against a previous pattern we saw where we saw the market base out take a high and then completely break down. Um, but what we're looking at right now is the market find support at a prior multi-week value area high, you know, this composite down here. And it is a reasonable area to expect some kind of higher low to develop. And, you know, risk is risk relative to the S&P. So as long as the S&P isn't continuing to make new lows, I don't see why Bitcoin should really suffer that brutal of any, you know, any kind of brutal activity. Bitcoin has actually shown a slight, a ever so slightly uh, weakening of that correlation between BTC and the ES. There's been some sort of idiosyncratic movement. It's definitely become weaker. And I think it's because we've seen some of the larger counterparties taken out of this market. Um, so, and to the one who's commenting, you know, Anthony Bayes, yeah, listen, this is the way the market always is, dude. Like I've been around multiple cycles, could we go to 10K? Absolutely. Like if we look at this chart, I mean, if we're back below this high time frame level, right? The next obvious level of support is all the way back down here. That's the link to this YouTube channel. Um, the next obvious level is back down here. So I'm right on with you, dude. If we start breaking down below this low and we show no signs of any kind of activity, well, then I'm just looking at this gap being covered. But right now we're not looking at that. So, you know, multiple moves towards a low are going to make you say things like no one wants this Ponzi. 
trust me when I tell you that the market only has to move up a couple thousand dollars, right? Retake a, a you know local structural level for people's minds to change, right? That's just narrative and emotions. They just follow price. <clears throat> so high time frame wise, this is an area where you know we could begin to base out. So I'm looking at this from a risk reward standpoint as a really good contextual risk reward standpoint to just add some more of that spot. You know, I added back down here when we touched that 200 the first time, dump some of that, add it again when we probed and reaccepted. So now that we're like at one of the extremes of this high time frame structure, it's just it, it's so close to an ugly invalidation that I, I can't justify not tagging some on. Not a futures position, not looking for any swing positions here unless we reclaim levels. Um, swing in terms of like extra exposure, trading futures, trading perps, but adding spot, long-term spot, like I'll be damned if I don't add at this level again, right? Because it's, if we lose this level, I mean, we're as close as, as we can get to it, like, you know, whatever. If we lose it, I'm wrong. Like it won't be the first time I'm wrong, but I'm not gonna not buy this level when the S&P is potentially sowing signs of, the same kind of bottoming and I don't want to like ruffle anyone's feathers, but I do think that the S and P is in a longer term bottoming period. And I think BTC and crypto is in basically the same, um, the same position. So high time frame level, right? As far as like intraday goes, let me actually stick to the daily for a second. As far as like swings go, future swings, I, I could, add something if we start to put in some kind of higher low and i'm not talking intraday i'm talking if we start to develop a higher low not excuse me not above that this is my intraday line in the sand that we'll get to but if we're back above if we look at that as like the mid and this is a high time frame range if we're back above here right i could see getting getting long with a larger futures position for some kind of swing. Or if we did get that probe that I thought we were gonna get and we reclaimed, then I would be willing to put on some kind of longer term longer term um, perp swing. For now, I just feel more, I feel more comfortable adding a little spot here. You know, it's not necessarily something I'm worried about. It has no path dependency and just sticking to the intraday. Uh, I don't wanna spend too much time in the daily. If we look at where we are on First, we'll start with BTC locally, and then we'll get to ETH. We'll look at the TPO actually, better idea. So just looking at one of the reasons why I was looking for continuation plays initially. So after this broke down, I must have taken three or four shorts very quickly in the direction of this move. Just what I could get on, on you know very short-term throwbacks um, in the direction of this move down though. And that was because this was a 10 day long structure that we are creating value within. Like a ton of overlap. You have a ton of diversion, excuse me, not diversion, dispersion at the beginning. We really began to compress down here. <clears throat> and then we finally got a very large break to the downside. So my idea was this is a range that we were stuck within for 10 days plus, right? This is, an absolute commitment if there is one outside of that structure it's 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 larger than the range that we proceeded from right so this is a serious move now there are a couple other things that were noteworthy as well this move was you know i was in a chat a, a private telegram with about 40 other people there was a very significant seller on binance and then a very significant seller on kraken that did not go to through otc but was just getting out of five thousand dollars five thousand dollars 5,000 BTC, you know, worth of positioning. So it wasn't necessarily the break that we were looking to, you know, immediately sort of reflexively fade. Moves inside this structure, right? As we're creating value within here, moves to the extremes. It makes sense to look for signs of absorption, signs of rejection at the extremes of this structure. Okay, as we're tightening up, the idea of where the extremes are becomes a little bit tighter as well. But once we're committed outside of this, it doesn't make sense to try to fade the first move. If anything, it makes sense to go with the first move. So we had a breakdown and I was expecting that we were gonna get some kind of pullback to maybe these singles and there's volume singles right there. There's TPO singles right here. Some kind of pullback that was exhaustive here and then more of a commitment down, 
right? Another, sort of another thrust down. Nothing major, right? But I just didn't think that this was kind of one leg down below value where we were, you know, within for 10 days and then immediately recover. But if that's the case, that's the case, right? These are just my opinions. I don't hang on to them. You know, as soon as they change, I'm changing my, you know, I'm going to be changing how I position myself. So 10 plus day range, big gap outside of the structure, but this leaves a pretty significant inefficiency. So I'm going to open this up in a second. But the idea is we're back within this gap. So really the next sticky area where bulls have to step in and the next best area to short is somewhere closer to here. Now, we're going to be establishing value now. We have one day of value here, one day of value here, no real overlap. But it's it's possible we begin to establish value between like this 19, you know, 19200 to 186 range. If we start falling back within the structure, right? Put in some kind of lower high here and show signs of just bulls completely losing, you know, losing any kind of endurance, then we could look at some kind of rotation within this range back down to the lows. Right? And we'll just look to for another range to develop here or possibly acceptance below these lows for continuation. But within this structure, right? If I let me just combine these. So I think it's nine or ten. Here is the value that I was talking about, right? One sec. There's no drawing tools on the web one, I don't think. Here's the value area for that prior structure. For me, it's not like we're showing a ton of strength above this level, right? Not a whole lot of strength into this gap. You know, normally if you accept into this gap, you know, for if we're accepting into these single prints, you'll get to move pretty quickly back to the underside of the structure, back to where the last point of the single prints are. If we get closer to this, this would be a better area to define a short, right? Or a better area to define a long, depending on if we're able to accept above there. So for BTC, if we're able to get back above something like, and this is higher than where we are now, and this is just talking intraday. I've been taking a lot of scalps, but for some kind of longer swing momentum play intraday, if we're able to get back above this 19.7 level, something like that, show signs of acceptance there, then we probably have a move from that up to, you know, an easy move back up to at least 20,300. And then you're probably looking somewhere to the next inefficiency, which is right around 20,800. So acceptance into this gap, something like this, it's not a gap, but an acceptance back into this range leads to a play further up again, okay? So 20,005, 20,008, not necessarily the case that I think that we would just exhaust out at you know the value area high of a prior composite, even though that's kind of what we're creating when we compress all those days anyway. Um, so where we are right now, it's not like the most attractive risk reward for any kind of trade, right? If we look at uh, BTC, <clears throat> just how it has transpired into this low, you had a ton of shorts come in. So this was the sign to kind of forget the, at least in the short term, forget the, 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 the I don't want to say short shorts, it's going to sound funny, but uh, the, the plays in the direction of this break. If we look at the TPO on this chart, right? Actually, it's, made, it's going to make it too uh, transparent, but one sec. Here is, let me just create value real quick with a box and then I'll get rid of that. There we go. So here's our breakdown. Here's where we begin to get some back and forth by the other side of the market. This is where things kind of change for the bears, right? More in favor of the bulls. You have this reclaim of market structure. So instead of continuing down outside of value, right? We have another day that opens up and we begin to reclaim local market structure. And then at that point, we're just looking at targeting the, the single prints and the high of the value of the prior day, which was, you know, a kind of a double distribution day. Uh, but nevertheless, it was where we had a good amount of trading activity. So this little flip is the change in structure, right? You see you have low, low, you know, sort of th three drives into the low. One, two, three. And then right here is where it things clearly changed, right? You have a higher low right here, all right? So a little bit of a transition. 
but now the market is 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 holding is selling and holding higher um, so this little shift right here from 18.8 this is where i longed back up to 19,000. it was just a quick trade right quick trade under the assumption that hey you know my my assumption was not necessarily that this was going to happen right away right? i added spot because we had a high time frame risk award that was decent um, but as far as local trades i wasn't thinking we were going to get this big spike move up if anything what i was anticipating was all right so big move down maybe we have sort of multi-day value that accumulates within this structure right whereas instead you know we have you know one day of value and another day of value slightly higher and maybe like i said we put in a larger range that leaves us with some kind of composite like this right and i don't want to jump too far ahead and, and try to predict what kind of composites we're going to get but that was where things <clears throat> changed at least in the short term whoops at least for short-term momentum this is the kind of change in price action that i look for honestly right if, if this was an area more locally where we are rounding out right buyers are getting stuffed well once we reclaim that level and it's holding from the other side well it's, it's clearly a sign that things are, are no longer favorable for bears and bulls at least in the short term are taking control um <clears throat> is everyone following along i have to check the chat it's been a long time Just looking at the chat real quick. And if you look at like BTC, there was a little bit more of a drive in CVD. There was, you know, there were signs of absorption more than just the shift in price action. So that's kind of like what you want to act on, right? I mean, if you have signs of absorption, if we have, for example, right here across exchanges, CVD is kind of making an equal low. I'm pretty sure it was making an equal low. Let's look at the... Uh, Take a look at BTC real quick. So there's our low. And yeah, so you have CVD making a lower low and price right there in that exact spot is making that higher low. So you have the sign of absorption, right? And then you have the sign of strength and price action, right? Price reclaiming a level. And, you know, that's a lot of the basis for setups in order flow, right? Where you have absorption, let's say you have multi candles like this, and then you have a low taken out, a ton of selling here. And then your trigger is if buyers are taking this thing back up in the opposite direction and price is now holding levels that it was no longer able to hold, right? Sort of an under over structure, but this is more, you know, it's just kind of spread out. <clears throat> so for BTC, we have a range developing today. It's clean. It's choppy. It has very clear extremes. Um, just opened a new daily candle. I didn't even look at it, honestly. So we might have had to play real quick off the open if it was one-sided. Uh, but I honestly wouldn't get involved where we are right here, right? This is a very balanced day so far. You know, we have an imbalanced day down here. A bunch of volume at the low. Let me put that back on. Or we'll just go back to the TPO. <clears throat> so we have a very balanced day decent high kind of a odd anomaly up here a ledge up there good low down there holding prior value um but very balanced so i wouldn't want to get involved again unless we had some kind of failure up again above today's high or some kind of break from value back into yesterday's value so again that would be us probably putting in a much larger range within that region so where we are specifically right now not the most attractive level if we had a move outside of this structure though takes the high and moves up again that 19 7 19, 8 level is the next sticky point to really pay attention um and that's you know i, I don't know if i would short that yet i don't know if i uh, i would long that yet so a lot of people say things like oh if we you know if we uh come to this level i'm gonna sell it or if we come to this level i'm gonna buy it i mean you're you know who said it really well recently? We were talking about this in a thread. Robot James, if you do that, you're giving up your optionality. You're committing to doing things in the future without seeing anything. Like, how do we come to this level, right? <clears throat> Are we coming to this level with buyers just absolutely ripping it and spot market leading and sellers still hitting this on perps and derivatives? Uh, is there some kind of catalyst? 
Um, are they continuing to short this as they get squeezed up? Or are we coming into this level with all derivative buying, you know, spot really pulling off the gas, um, volume dropping, right? Shorts are no longer getting liquidated. You know, there's a couple of reasons why we might take different sides at this level, but this just happens to be the next level that I want to look at, right? Where the risk reward is there, right? If we came to this level, right, we're back within this prior range, we break through, and then again, we see, you know, sort of the same structure that we have here. Like, let's say we're testing the underside of that. And this is just to convey the idea of, you know, under, over, sold, and hold. I didn't, I didn't mean that to say that like that. That sounded silly. <laughs> but uh, if we flip that level, let's say that this is that 19.8 level. And then we flip it, and then sellers are coming in. And you see that they're selling it. You see they're hammering it on Delta. You look at CBD, right? Signs that it's being absorbed, and it's holding and we're making bullish market structure above it, well, then that's your sign of acceptance, right? And then that is, you know, the, as as fast as you could put on the trade usually means, you know, determines whether or not you're going to have a decent risk reward set up, right? Because if your window of opportunity is from here to here, well, it really pays for you to be able to recognize that, you know, that shift um, pretty quickly. That being said, if we come to this level, price is pushing through, CVD is moving up, right? Not getting rewarded though. We have some kind of take of that high and then failure. Well, if we have a backside retest of that level, something like this, consolidate, consolidate, you know, break the high, and then we're giving some kind of underside, lower high structure, <clears throat> underside retest, and you have the signs that buyers are getting absorbed here. Well, maybe that maybe that's a decent fade, right? But we won't know until we actually, you know, until we actually uh, cross that road. You know, looking on the low time frames, like buyers and sellers are just getting trapped on both sides. Like this, this is a very balanced structure, and and people are getting caught on both ends, assuming that you're either getting the breakdown or getting continuation. Um, and it's looking a little bit more favorable for bulls right now, because we have this slight drift upward, right? Sellers coming in ton over here but not really leading to the same kind of results that we had prior where we had these gaps down. We had these kind of inefficient moves down uh, where stops are getting run and, and you know sellers were imparting their control a little bit more obviously. But nevertheless, at the extremes, you know, Binance, Bybit, same exact thing. You're getting, you take out a low and then look what happens right below that low. Grabbing stops you know, forcing the breakdown sellers and then reversing it. And and these setups are what I look for on the low time frames if I'm scalping intraday. You know, I have, I'm looking at, <clears throat> if we're early on in the session and we have a high low and we're balanced to begin with uh, and we already have kind of a wide range for, forming for the beginning of the session, I'm not thinking like, for example, ooh, my mouse is dying. Great thing about the... Uh, MX Master Mouse is that it uh, charges really fast. Um, I'm going to go ahead and plug it in anyway. Hold on one second. Bear with me. Wait, is that even a plug for this mouse? Yes, it is. All right. This pain in the butt. Oh, ah, I'll let it. If it dies, it dies, and then I'll plug it in. Um, the cord I was going to go plug it into is uh, tethered a little tightly behind my computer. Um, we're early on in the day, right? So if we, I'll just put on the profile real quick. <clears throat> we're early on in the session and we have somewhat of a balanced profile forming. Um, I'm looking at the high and the low, right? That was, I'm looking at the high and the low for the first sign of, of those continuation buyers or those continuation sellers to try to step in, you know, looking for the reversal sellers at the low, looking for the continuation buyers at the high. And honestly, looking for them not to get rewarded just because this is the environment we're in, right? It's not, we are making a strong move off of the lows, but we're at, you know, what would be logically higher time frame resistance is a 10 day long structure. We just broke down from it. Um, I'm looking for traders to get trapped at these extremes. And this, this is where a lot of my trades actually end up happening. It's local highs and lows that stand out. <clears throat> Your obvious levels on the chart, you know, where people are going to panic, where people are going to FOMO. And looking to lean on them once they, you know, once they lose that fight. So when we make a move through the low, like this, and then you see that price is consolidating and basing out. So real quick, we'll just zoom in. 
I'll put on bid ask. You know, I like to do what is easiest to read. So sometimes you'll see me with the bid ask on. Sometimes you'll see me with different profiles. Honestly, it depends on my mood. So you get a bunch of selling below that low. Where's my candles? That's what I want to have. Obvious. Oh, they are color candle. Um, <clears throat> this is the selling into the low. Right? Below that prior low for what was the low of the day. And then you have more selling coming in. But notice here we are spending our time, right? This is where the candle's closing above that selling. So now price is beginning to drift further up. Even though we've had that selling come in, price is still holding that selling. So more selling right there. You could just see that this area has been tattered, right? It's been hit a bunch, and yet price is rotating higher. So the anticipation is not, okay, this is going to reverse, or this is just thrown back a little bit, and then we're going to continue. It's, oh, okay, no, we just caught traders at the low of the day and we're probably going to rotate this back to the center right back to the mean um <clears throat> so that being said i mean this level is kind of this area is kind of clear you know being that it's kind of floating up it does look like this wants to give you know some kind of exhaustive spike um but the levels are obvious right if we if we break down at the low and you're starting to accept below there you know, we're back into prior day's value, then we're just targeting, you know, yesterday's lows. ETH, a lot stronger than BTC, right? ETH end up totally recovering the gap, right? So we'll open this profile. Here's your inefficiency down, right? Ton of activity soaked at the high, had the breakdown, but ETH was sitting much more attractively to begin with. Accepting back into a gap, what didn't happen with BTC happened with ETH, right? So nine times out of 10, you're going to see this, right? You spend a little bit of time in the gap um, or you're consolidating at the gap and the breakthrough is going to just cover the gap. So this is a low volume region. So LVN, nine times out of 10, if we return back to it. So if we have a... You know, if we have a multi-day value that was established, whether it's, you know, high or low. And then we finally do get a huge move down and it leaves this gap between. This is the threshold that you look to for some kind of risk reward play in the direction of this move. If we start accepting into that gap, there's nothing standing back in the way of that move going from one side to the other again. Right from one to two, and that's because a lot of the times there's sellers of that breakdown that are not tested. Right, I call I, I've referred to them as you know uncontested sellers or unchallenged sellers. In the case that price moved down, right, the same happens. The same app, the same happens uh, if moves happen like that to the upside. They're very inefficient moves. You know, good market structure builds on itself. Right, a market is ranging when it's established value, when it's in balance, when buyers and sellers are in agreement, right? Fair value. A market trends when new information that has not been absorbed by the market is absorbed by the market <clears throat> and the market is processing that new information and value is being moved in one direction over the next. And then price establishes new value. Ideally, the market builds bases on the way up, right? Ideally, you have more of this structure that is efficient right versus moves that just do this right and leave behind nothing in between so really a good trending day would be multiple periods of consolidation within the structure where you get something like this right and your entry would be looking towards that that gap to you know get involved with the trend at the most risk reward appropriate level because right? if you start re-accepting back in the opposite direction, you know, it's a good sign that the trend is maybe not necessarily as strong or, or willing to trend as you anticipated. Uh, but ETH covered this structure, and now we're just kind of, again, you, you move from one value area to the next. Here's that thick spot we were within prior to breakdown. This is exactly where we found resistance at the point of control. So for ETH, 
I think honestly, the long long is much more obvious because with BTC, it's like if you have a break above this local consolidation, yeah, you have a little bit of distance for you know decent scalp from here to the underside of that that 10 day range, right? <clears throat> could blow through it, maybe it could get stuffed right away. With with ETH though, I think this is a bit more attractive. Right, so let's go to ETH's. One ETH's daily structure looks a lot better. It looks more like the S&P, honestly. All right, you look at ETH, you look at like the S&P retesting prior composite, you know, retesting the top side. This is not exactly uh, as far down, um, but not as obviously not as bad as as uh, as BTC. But locally, what am I doing? Oh, it's because I have this set up. If ETH gives us something where, and again, you have an untested high right here, untested high right there, multi-day consolidation down here, inefficient move down, filled, inefficient move down, filled. If we're going to claim structure above something like, yes, you know, that prior point of control around 1260, if we could start finding support local to this high, I don't think that you get something that just does this and breaks down. I, I don't know. I, I'd be hard pressed to to imagine that that happens rather than this consolidates against here. You get a move back above this level and that rips because there's not, I mean, look at ETH structure. Uninterrupted high here, uninterrupted highs here. Huge old gap. Next naked point of control by right, 1850. But big inefficient move down from 18 down to 17. So there's not really much that stands in the way. Right? Whereas BTC has a lot more to deal with. So, I mean, you get the point right away. If we're going back, like if we look at ETH date, that's the 19th of ETH. We're looking at a structure that's on the 19th. We're looking for, I mean, shit, where is, uh, yeah, what day was that? Was that on all the way back to August 19th? And then, I mean, damn. I mean, it, all you have to do is look at the daily for BTC to see that it's just much further down. And there's a lot more stickiness ahead of it. So with BTC, from here to here, you're looking at, right? Maybe you get a throw higher. But then you're still reevaluating re things once you get here. Whereas if this chart was ETH, it's already back up here, right? We're already kind of hovering at, you know, the <clears throat> a more significant level for some kind of puke through. Now, that being said, still have a little bit of a single down here. This is where price wicked into, right? So you had an inefficient move up. When you have an inefficient move up like that, that single threshold is where you're going to look for support. You know, now if we have put in this high and we're starting to fall back within this structure, you know, you're looking back down to 1575. And then if you're unable to find support there, we're just, you know, more likely to attack the lows again. And maybe this was, this is still just a, a larger range in progress. These are volume profiles for each day. Yes. Let me just pour myself a little water. Give me a sec, guys. So. <clears throat> I, a lot of my trading the last day and a half, two days has been just low time frame scalping. Um, you, you know, the trades that I talk about that everyone thinks I take that I don't always take. Well, I actually have been taking a fair amount of those. So a lot of people, you know, when they think that I am talking about scalping, they think I'm talking about, you know, taking 100 trades a day. Um, you know, sometimes for me, that means just a couple of intraday trades, right? Intraday momentum plays. Shorter term trades, shorter term trades doesn't necessarily mean scalping, but a lot of my trades in the last two days have been scalping, right? Because again, we're just getting a lot of uh, trappy setups. So today opened up, let's see, let's take a look at today's candle. Uh, 
Oh, no, we haven't. So we haven't closed this out yet. So in about an hour, maybe we'll have a, a setup to take. We don't have any kind of inside day setup. We don't have any kind of, you know, today was a balanced day for both BTC and ETH. So maybe a break from balance setup. <clears throat> but if we have, you know, a lot of the times the opening drive gives you a de decent setup. The, the weekly open gives you a decent setup. The monthly open. Um, so where was I? Not this chart. This is BTC. So if we have a drive right off of the open, uh, again, the same idea as, as back here. It's rare that you're going to get a flat, right? A flat side, right? No, you know, it's rare that you're going to have a candle that has the high and the low or the low and the open or the high and the open at the same exact level. So the open of the daily and the weekly and the monthly, um, they offer opportunities to clean that up, at least for short-term trades. Oh, wait, I can't change this because I want to keep this uh, template the same. This is just the daily. A lot of times I'll leave this on the three minute or the one minute, just the actual day session with <clears throat> uh, VWAP with standard deviation bands. All right, uh, what else did I want to cover? And then we'll open up a little q and I'll take a look through the comment section. And please hit the like button. Remember, please hit the like button. So everyone's, uh, so there's not a whole lot that's going on, right? I mean, we have very brief narratives. You know, the markets are kind of exhausted. I'm sure everyone would love to find a narrative to long, but every narrative lasts like uh, it's over before it starts. But the popular pair more recently is this Luna pair, right? L-U-N-C, okay? Um, Terra Classic, right? This is uh, really popular right now because it inspires thoughts of waves, mm and other coins that have just absolutely mooned uh, and might represent great short opportunities. Now, if we look at this chart on a higher time frame chart, you get a better idea, All right? So we're talking since June, um, you know, a thousand percent off the lows. We're talking since the beginning of September. I mean, this is a daily chart, September 1st from the open. This was up 169%. Uh, just something that probably isn't going to continue in this direction, right? I talked about this numerous times in the last few months. You got to be really careful shorting alts. Uh, there's a lot of jump risk in this market. There's a lot of, can uh, I don't want to say cannibalistic, but there's a lot of predatory behavior. Um, conditions are thinner. <coughs> it's player, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> went down the wrong pipe <coughs> I'm not going to mute myself because when it goes down the wrong pipe it's always really funny <coughs> you know when water goes down the wrong pipe and you're out in public and you know that you have to cough more but you try to act like you don't have to cough anymore <coughs> and you're just hoping it goes away but you know the next cough is coming <coughs> I always think about that when like, you're at a restaurant and you're like oh, I'm good I'm good but you know that you're still you have a fucking lung to cough out <coughs> anyway <coughs> um uh, all right. So Luna classic, all right now this is starting to, it's on everybody's radar. Everyone's looking for the short. Um, and I'm, you know, there's, there's something to be, okay. So you could be right about the direction of the market, right? Over time, I think we're all correct. If we assume that it's going to do this, right? Putting on a trade is a completely different story. Okay. One, if you're trading futures and you're shorting, that's the way you're that's the way you're shorting. Okay. 
if you're doing that, then there's path dependency to your position. Meaning, even though price comes down here, if you're shorting, you really want price to come down like this versus like this, right? So that is something you have to deal with. You could short things all day if you have infinite margin and you could just martingale on things and you're not taking a very serious position. You know, you're not increasing your risk or exposure towards it beyond like any significant value of the capital you have on the exchange, <clears throat> right? So you can put on a short behind this and a lot of times, you know, if you have enough breathing room, it's fine, but most people are gonna try to hit this out of the park, right? Because it represents an amazing inverse investment as GCR likes to say, right? Because we all know it's coming back down here at some point. The path it takes to get there is a completely different story. So there's a ton of path dependency with, with futures trades, right? The higher the leverage, the more path dependency. If you are trading on 100X leverage, and this is your entry point, you need price to literally go up sort of monotonically. <laughs> so that is just linearly, but monotonically would be up and then never making a new low. So price might move sideways, but it never makes a new low. So monotonically positive. You learn something new in the stream. Um, if you're trading, you know, if you're trading 10x leverage, you have maybe a little bit more breathing room. Oh, I entered here. Oh, shit. Okay, I got a little breathing room down to here. All right, the more, you know, obviously, the, the more leverage you use, the less breathing room you have. So there's going to be a lot of people that are shorting this, all right? Um, it's very dangerous, too. It, it seems like, you know, listen, it's compelling to know that it's, it's tough to know that, like, the biggest target exists right now but it's it's sometimes better off for you not even to go for it um unless you have a tremendous amount of discipline right because that, that's it is it's going to be tough to not think oh my god this is guaranteed come guaranteed to come down well this is a you know obviously it's a really positive ev trade you know uh, i'm guaranteed it doesn't work like that this is going to be probably uh, my assumption is this is going to be a rough ride so you have people like light talking about it people like gcr talking about it Maybe they're not even position in position yet. Maybe they know that and they're psyoping because they know that something like this probably happens. Okay. Something like that happening. If you're short here, that's a 12% move up to the highs. For something that moved this much, let's say that you're 2x leverage. This liquidates you, right? Let's say you're 3x leverage. This liquidates you. Okay. You're fucked. <laughs> um, so it's tough to get behind something like this when everyone is trying to get behind it, right? Um, <clears throat> so what I would say is th these things are really great to observe. You want to see, you know, you, if this thing continues to make new highs, you're, you're just going to see violent squeezes. Right? If we look at this right now on CoinAlize, just look what's happened after those tweets, for example. I mean, the funding on this is insane. If you held a, a short position, you could get liquidated off the funding alone. Your, if your margin was, you know, your collateral was too low. Um, so here is after literally when it starts to look like it's breaking down, I think he was using like Bollinger's or Kelter channels and it looked like price was, you know, changing trend because it, it's not really favoring the outside of that structure anymore. It's, it's reverting back to the mean or beyond more than it has for the trend, right? For what has, you know, been characteristic of the trend. Um, so obviously there's a lot of ways you could define a trend and what, what signifies that the trend is broken besides, you know, moving averages, but <clears throat> that's the, the tweet, right? This is the, the first big change in market structure we're looking at, you know, this is a, I'll, for the market structure stuff, I'll stick to the higher time frame chart first. Um, daily, I mean, fuck <laughs> one, two, right? Just talking about where there's a little bit of back and forth three, you got to zoom in on this one. The first real significant market structure change. We've had throwbacks before that have crushed prior lows. Tap, drop back down to this low, right? Now we have a move up, holds that structure. We're good to go. Brief consolidation though, right? So this, this is a structure that starts off stronger, still decent. Look at the length of this. And now... Things are getting tighter and things are moving faster. So the idea of, like I was talking about structure before, how it's painted, things speed up. They go parabolic. The consolidations are shorter and shorter. And then <clears throat> there's not a whole lot that stands in the way when you're vertical at that point. You get the ugly ass move. So this was the first sign of, you know, significant kickback. 
Another detail is there is no, Binance is not burning any of the centralized exchange, any of the coins on the exchange. So that's a significant component of any kind of long thesis when there's no longer any kind of burn of supply. Mm. So we have that in a bear market, okay? And one thing that's, I'm gonna challenge my idea that it's not a great short right away. It's gonna be an, it's absolutely coming back down. One thing that actually might make it be the case that this does break down faster is that there is no major Coinbase listing. There's no, you know, we're not in a bull market right now where you have a bunch of retail coming in. There's none of that. So this doesn't really have a spot catalyst. And if it had any kind of spot, any fundamental argument, it was, it was the burn. So again, though, you have a ton of OI. And all we could say is that that's come in with, you know, funding being just slammed. So you know a bunch of, I mean, come on, fuck. You know a lot of people are shorting this. It's not gonna be a gimme though. So you're gonna ride the struggle bus, right? I, I assume that this is gonna give you a tough ride. Um, and if anything, like scaling into a position that's again, very safe, might reward you. Are you willing to let this thing move up a lot and you get filled for only a really small portion? But still, I mean, even in this structure alone, we're looking at <clears throat> perp CVD selling much harder, spot CVD, you know, showing signs of strength against perp CVD. It's the obvious first trade to penalize. So you kind of want to see that get worked out. So when we stop liquidating shorts, so if we start seeing that short liquidations are going down, um, funding is beginning to flip and, you know, this open interest is starting to come down. There's really not a whole lot of, of anything to keep this up. So if it's going to move fast. Um, timing, this is going to be a bitch though, I think. So this can move and blow out most people. You know, GCR can short a lot of things because he has a fuckload, excuse my language. This is not for children though. Um, he could just literally martingale into positions if he wanted to. I know he, he's obviously much better than someone who's going to martingale into things just, you know, uh, dangerously, but he has enough money on the exchange to put on a meaningful short and still to never even be close to his liquidation. Right. Um, <clears throat> and that might give you some insight into how larger players can play period, because they don't have a pain point that a lot of other people have especially in a bear market, right? In a bull market, you know you're going to get rewarded if you're wrong. That's why trading spot in a bull market, we're not that you know, but you're confident that mistakes will get rewarded at some point. Like the cavalry will come back to pick you up. If you're trading spot, all right, I fucked up a spot position, but I'm spot, I still own it. I'm not worried about a liquidation. Okay, all right. So the inverse is true in a bear market, but you're dealing with leverage and you're dealing with, you know, you're dealing with trading futures because you can't short spot, right? without any kind of pain point at all, right? Without any kind of liquidation. You could short spot, you know, uh, you could leverage your spot on Binance. You could short spot, you know, with leverage, but I'm pretty sure I don't trade on Binance, but um, still, I think you guys get the point. You want to see that, you, I think you want to see that there's some kind of blowout and that no longer spot is, is trying to penalize um, any kind of, you know, overly aggressive positioning in futures to the downside. So ideally, you have something that doesn't look like this. There's nothing that's going to support this, right? Once it's once big selling starts coming in and this is done. And again, the thing is, it's making me a little bit, you know, I want to get a piece of this too. Is like, all right, well, we don't really have like, uh, there's not a whole lot of fuel to worry about other than this squeezing out the first assholes that try to short it. And I don't want to, I don't mean call anybody an asshole shorting it. I think you get the idea. Like the obvious trade that gets penalized. And then this thing is probably good to just cascade. Um, all right, let me take a look at the chat. Hey, sorry. My dog is licking herself behind me. Drives me nuts. Um, all right. So, Damn. Appreciate the chat, guys. <clears throat> uh, t -t 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 zero to 10 million as a trader. How long did it take you and how long does it take the average pleb? Um, I can tell you that I made the majority of it in the last two and a half years. So I did well in my trading career. I had massive ups and downs, um, but I can't sit here and discount the fact that a significant portion of my success that I'm happy to have hung on to 
came from trading crypto during this last bull market. I traded the last bear market really well because I'd come from trading stocks and looking for shit that had blown off the same way that a lot of crypto had blown off as well. So I was one of the people during 2000 and end of 2007 and then 2018 who was literally just saying short the shit out of everything. Um, t -t -t -t. I will say that after you make your first million, the second is a lot easier. And then scaling up from there is, is a different story. I mean, I think that when you're, as soon as you start approaching eight figures, you're, and listen, I hope everybody makes it there. That's awesome. Um, I know that, you know, that's not going to be the case. Again, trading has a really high attrition. Uh, as soon as you hit that, you're going to be thinking more along the lines of capital pres preservation. I always say like the best thing that happened to me was to get married because I stopped being a cowboy in markets. Um, and now having a child on the way, it's a completely different story. Like I have a significant amount of capital, but I am happy actually to trade just growing linearly. I, I, I don't think of, I get really excited about trading. I have an aggressive personality to begin with. Uh, I'm an intense person. That's why I love trading lower time frames. Uh, I couldn't be one of those people that takes just a couple positions, uh, you know, over the course of a couple weeks or a month. Uh, I, there's definitely periods where when you look back at my trading, you go, oh, okay. So you're definitely, you know, not paying as much attention. You weren't trading as much. Um, I still get very excited to trade, but I do not, like when you're younger, if you live at home, you could blow up. <laughs> if you live with your parents, you could blow up like 10 times. And just speaking to anyone in their 20s, by the way, I had someone talk about just not knowing where they were in life and not feeling like they made it. Like if you're not 30, you could fuck up 20 times. Even in your 30s, you could fuck up and you could still make it. <laughs> I think more importantly, you have to have a mindset. It's not about how old you are, or, you know, where you are right now. Um, but yeah, the last two and a half years have been incredible. And I'm just glad that I was able to hold on to it. Uh, t -t 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 -t. I learned how to stay on. Nice. Good for you, man. What's up, Doc? Long time. I didn't get a bike, Doc. I didn't get a bike. I got, re dude, I got really into running and cardio, but I didn't get a bike. See, I'm, I'm terrible with, I'm flaky when I say I'm going to get something or do something and then I forget about it. I didn't golf as much as I wanted to, uh, but I did relax, so. Um, uh, it free, pen and paper's free, Excel's free. Discord, Discord's a great tool, man. I mean, I um, I don't want to dox anything. Hold on one second. Let me just change my scene, and I will. One sec. I don't want to blow. All right, here we go. Okay. Um, let me change the screen again. Lower left. All right, this is my Discord. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, I'm not like, dude, I'm not a crazy Discorder. I am, I'm in two main groups. Um, some of you might recognize some of them on the margin, uh, but this is my personal Discord journal that I created. I'm not gonna go into the actual uh, channels, but performance, calendar watch list daily tickers setups daily recap and thoughts ideas and notes knowledge bites um new educational content my cockpit so that is uh something that i just started doing using discord uh, listen it's a no-brainer it's like most of us use this this is an awesome way to organize and keep track of of even your thoughts throughout the day like where i write the most daily recap and thoughts um but that's free. You just have to do it. Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, I'm still under the assumption that I think that the correlation has somewhat abated, at least the strong correlation, just ever so slightly. 
I think that's more about intraday though. Um, you know, crypto has a little bit more idiosyncratic flow, but I think it's because it's, we're back down to us, <laughs> like just us. Uh, a lot of larger desks I think are out, um, have de-risked. So some of the things that actually tether the markets together are no longer present. That being said, larger moves, like you get a multi-standard deviation move, uh, crypto is going to respond like pure beta. So if S&P dumps 10%, Bitcoin's dumping 20, right? At a minimum. If it doesn't, that's a, if it doesn't, and we're not talking about instantly, but if it, if crypto holds its ground over the course of days and S&P is doing something different, well, wow, we have a significant, you know, regime shift there alone. But I don't know if that, I think we're more likely going to be continuing the direction of correlation permanently. That's just the way things are in markets. Um, the day that crypto is accessible on the same brokerage platform as where you trade stocks, everything else, you know, TD Ameritrade and, uh, interactive brokers for anyone who's like more retail friendly, the day that happens, you're guaranteed the, the reason why crypto, one of the reasons why crypto is un, or has been less correlated is because there's distance between it and legacy. That's just an ever receding pocket of distance now though. So. Um, yeah, I could share the template. You could message me on, on Twitter. All right. And da, 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 da. runner just wait for C. Yeah. Just wait for CVD spot spot CVD to trend down. Excellent point. I think I just said something like that or to that effect. Uh, are you still saying the same thing you said last bear market? No, nah, this market is different this time around. So I'm not saying the same exact thing. I think that we are, I think we, I listen, I don't think we're in a place where, so last, you know, 2018, don't forget that crypto popped equities didn't yet. They continue to move up. Um, I don't think we're going to have that now. Like if the S and P starts, let's say the S and P starts putting in higher ground above 42, we're off these lows even higher and, and there's more of a sign that after CPI and after this next FOMC, like, listen, FOMCs, 75 basis points, basically priced in now, you know, coming up for this next meeting. Um, but 75 in September, probably 75 in October, probably 50 and then 25 into the end of the year. If the market is still standing its ground, well, that's as good of a signal as you can get, right? Because a lot of like macro noobs, they keep just saying the information we all have access to. That's not what makes a market. That's not the difficult part of trading. Okay. It's, it, it's, you have to pay attention to like the little nuance. You're not going to get an exact green light. You got to pay attention to when things start to change in the face of, you know, let's say that the Fed is continuing to, you know, hike and the markets are no longer making new lows or, you know, hikes are coming down. Markets are still, are starting to, you know, gain ground. Uh, and then some kind of good news is reflect is reflected positively in markets and they're moving on good news again. Like there's a lot that goes into this. It's not, oh, just we know things are bad. Like they're going to just continue to go down. It's like, not, markets can go up and the economy can be shit. Markets lead the economy, if anything. So if, if equities start gaining ground, I don't think crypto is going to put in any kind of new lows. Crypto potato, three different careers in your thirties and now you're 35. Good for you, man. That's absolutely, you know, you could have three or four different careers. Rip zoo capital. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, I enjoyed zoo capital. It kind of just like, uh, it just started going to just bullshit. I don't, you know, I like being on discord sometimes. Like I'm not that active, honestly. Like I'm, I'm in my late thirties. Like I treat this like a business. I I'm at the desk. I bullshit sometimes. Sometimes I'm more, you know, I'm more apt to bullshit. It depends on my mood. But if I'm in a group, like it has to be, there has to be a certain maturity level. You know, there's a lot of children in this market, like just very immature behavior. 
No, listen, I was a fucking asshole when I was younger too for certain periods of time. I get it. I just, I don't have room for it. Like I don't have bandwidth for that. Uh, I don't need that impressing upon me. Um, and if there's no serious talk going on, it's all just bullshit. Like there's a time for that, but all the time is not the time. No, I don't have any thoughts on consumer credit, buddy. Uh, so in this kind of environment, Collis, um, yeah, I am more of a meaner version trader, more of a, a fader looking to step in front of moves. Um, John D, your question. Uh, what is the first rule of Fight Club? <laughs> That's all I'll say. Um, so anyway, I think that covers it though, guys. Uh, I'm glad I was able to take questions. Uh, Listen, use the tools that are at your disposal. This is another one that I was not uh, aware of until recently. I had a calendar, you know, investing.com has a calendar, Coifin has a calendar, but this is a great calendar. This is a, a Forex factory, but if you click on their crypto craft, they have, they have organized events that have had importance in both crypto and legacy. So the events we really wanna pay attention to, tr news trading in this market, um, whether it's uh, event trading or you know surprise news trading, events known or unknown, is a is a great listen. It, it's you can make a ton of money doing it because this, this is not a this is not an efficient market yet in the sense that equities are, and they're not efficient either. So you know forget about your like uh, random walk down Wall Street. You know markets are efficient. Uh, Eugene Fama thesis. Um, is, no, that's random walk down Wall Street. I, I might be fucking that up. Uh, they're not efficient, right? Otherwise, they wouldn't trend, right? Markets, uh, they disseminate new information, process new information, reflect it by trending. So this market is especially inefficient compared to legacy. And you could trade news like with, I swear, I swear, it, there is a, a slightest little bit of latency that if you were, you know, if you had an HFT set up, if you were uh, savvy, you know, in terms of programming and, and developing on your end, you could really squeeze the, you know, the juice out of the trade more than I can as someone who's a point and clicker, right? Um, and I'm working with a friend who's developing, you know, a system to be able to trade news more more aggressively because I, I, I shared a video of my trading in one of the videos I posted in this channel and I killed it during uh, non-farm payroll. But you could see, I literally pressed the button in the split second, within the 60 seconds after of the of the drop, right? Not the drop down, but the news drop. Um, S&P's up, BTC's up 50 basis points. I pressed the button right when I saw it, right? Well, I mean, you can start talking about how fast the signal processes from, you know, your your eyes to, you know, your, your actual uh, motor function, but still that, then the connection to my internet, and then, you know, the exchange processing that. L listen, either way, like by the time I press the trade, I lost some of it, right? We know that. And then I'm marketing in because you're not getting filled. So I'm marketing in, you're marketing in, everybody's marketing in. Market makers are pulling out, okay? At least in that little threshold because the flow is toxic. So you're losing to slippage. You're transaction cost sensitive, right? At that moment, more transaction cost sensitive. Uh, or no, you might not be. Obviously, that depends on your actual your risk but still that you're you're dumping into an empty you're, you're picking up out of an empty book you're you're taking the trade late but still my point is you still can trade these uh with an edge because they're not it's not going to move as fast as the s p and the s p is kind of like your signal um and i think that's that <clears throat> I think that is that. Uh, last question, let's see. Yeah, commodities are down. Listen, I feel bad for any kind of energy traders that got carried out recently. Um, oil down being good for markets, yes. First order, yes. Uh, I am not a commodity fundamentals dude so i couldn't tell you what the second third fourth order effects of that are and possibly how it might be negative um in silico bunker i love in he's an absolute madman but he's I, I respect him more than 
probably 99% of people that uh, are on Twitter, but he's just a madman. Uh, if you understand that, that's fine, right? Like if someone had the, if someone had like a ton of knowledge and you could learn from them, but they were an asshole, uh, and you know, I'm not calling him an asshole. Some people might call him an asshole, but that's the word I used. <laughs> um, uh, I mean that, you know, very, in very friendly manner. Like, does that negate the fact that you could still take a ton from that person? No, it doesn't. Like, can you get over that? Hopefully, so you could learn something. Um, so the bunker though is his telegram, I think. Uh, I was in it a while back when it was like active conversation. But um, yeah, it's a great uh, dump of information. So that's that though. I am done. It's a great stream. If you guys want leave a comment let me know what you think maybe what you would want me to go over more of if i miss something um key me in i would really appreciate that because i do want to make the best of this channel if you're not subscribed obviously make sure that you subscribe um and yeah i think that we're gonna actually push up a little bit more oh look we have a nice dump so maybe you get the failure here again we don't have any wind in the sails really besides Smashing some shorts that are taking the obvious position. All right, guys. I think that'll be it, though. I appreciate all of you. This will be recorded, so uh, it'll be posted after this. And, uh, yeah, have a fantastic evening. And I hope to talk to you all soon.